Hey guys, Bloody Vintage here. I uh, got some US World War II um, rough out boots. Obviously reproduction. Uh, the number one thing you wanna do when you get these boots uh, from whatever retailer you choose. Uh, I got these from Epic Militaria off of, um, off of Amazon. Sorry, not off of Amazon, off of eBay. Uh, they're a really good deal. Honestly, super comfy, super good quality. I was sort of skeptical. Uh, other retailers are What Price Glory, um, at the front. I think there's one at like SMH Warehouse or something like that. But I was pretty happy with these, so warm around a little bit to make sure I was satisfied. But uh, the main thing that they tell you to do is once you get these, uh, you gotta number one, make them waterproof. Uh, the rough out is kind of helps with that, but you really need to uh, use some product on them. So from what I've read, uh, I think the standard, uh, even back in the day was uh, using beeswax, uh, applied first, and then uh, dubbing. So these are both waterproofing sealing agents. Uh, and what they'll mainly do is waterproof and seal, but they'll also darken your boots. So I don't even know if you can see the little test spot. That's just the beeswax. Uh, it's always a shame to do kind of, because this is just a nice smooth boot, uh, but you won't see any of these, um, at least originals. Uh, that aren't dead stock. Uh, any ones that are issued have had uh, these uh, things uh, applied on them. So uh, I'll just go over first sort of the two items that I'm using. Uh, the first one, um, this is actually from uh, a horse saddle shop. Uh, so it's called Leather Seal. It's beeswax, uh, if you can see there. Um, I use this based on all my leather stuff. Uh, all Any reproduction or any originals that are dried out. This is good because it doesn't discolor uh, too badly. Now again, you'll also see beeswax beeswax. This is true beeswax. I use this for coating my uh, my canteens and such. You can melt this down and put it on your boots. Um, I'm not really sure about that. As far as I've seen with that, that's for getting a really nice kind of spit polish under toe cap kind of use. Uh, so I prefer to use the, uh, the liquidy one. So I'll just open this up and show you. Uh, don't know if you can get a good idea there. There's a bunch of gunk in there just from my other projects, but uh, nice and easy to work with, kind of like a, almost almost like a hair paste. So there's that, and then after I've applied that, I'm gonna use the, um, the Dubbin. Doesn't really matter which brand. Uh, this one's Kiwi. Dubbin is pretty basic, probably a lot of you guys already have it. And again, that's almost a little bit greasier, but that'll kind of add a little bit more of a sheen and a waterproof uh, layer on top of the beeswax. So this is sort of my first attempt. So let's start going and I'll show you, show you the steps I'm gonna follow. And this is my first time, so I'm gonna see how it turns out. All right, so the first thing I've done is removing the shoelaces. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to impede it. Uh, shoelaces can depend. Uh, these ones are decent. Uh, the originals that I have are, are waxed, almost wax shoelaces. Uh, so it depends what you wanna do. Uh, I think the waxed are great, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like them on my original, even though they're very realistic and obviously original. Uh, I just found it harder to tighten up your shoes and, and work with them even though they were waterproof. Uh, so I guess it depends what you wanna go on for the laces. Uh, but there's a lot of reproduction, even like waxed ones. Um, I'm happy with these for now, but that's just me personal preference and I might move to wax later. Or to be honest, I can probably use some dubbin or beeswax on these and get them a little bit uh, stiffer to where I want it. So I'm gonna open up this, uh, get yourself a rag. This is my beeswax rag, so it's already nice and greasy with dubbin and beeswax. Um, so that's great. So literally just like any polishing rag, you're sort of gonna get your finger in there, two fingers, it's up to you. I prefer to start with one finger uh, and get some little grease on there. Well, I'm calling it grease, but I'm just gonna pull out the stuffing here your hand in and then I'm going to sort of work it in as I go and it's actually working out good so far it's coming up with that nice darkened color you would expect to see on uh on original rough out boots um I'm gonna end up using a toothbrush for the close in work anybody that's polished boots which I'm assuming most of the reenactors have uh that's going to be pretty straightforward for you uh, so I'm not going to get into too much detail. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch the whole thing. Um, but this will give you an idea of kind of how it's going to go. So I'm just sort of dabbing a little bit at a time, not going crazy, kind of rubbing it in. Um, I'm not going to go nuts on it right now, like a polish where you're just working on one spot. 
uh, mainly because I'm not sure how this leather is going to behave. Luckily, this is real leather, uh, at least from the smells of it. Uh, it's real leather. Um, some repros may not, so you don't know how this stuff is going to react. So that's why I'd say always choose a test spot, sort of at the back of the heel, never on the nose, or even underneath here, uh, or or in the uh, crevices here, uh, to test out to see how it's going to work out. But I know this stuff like the back of my hand. It's what I use on everything, so I kind of know how it's going to behave. Uh, and it looks very good with this leather so far. So I'm gonna continue on this boot and uh, and then I'll show you sort of the uh, the end product once I have it dubbed. All right, just wanna give you guys a little update. I've just been working away here, uh, honestly not too long at all, but uh, you can see sort of the, the leather in the center of the boot is a much coarser leather than the rest of it, um, which who knows if it's this production run or it's just this side. I'm not sure. Again, they're repros so and they're not consistent, um, especially, uh, you know, when you're paying certain prices, you kind of know what you're going to get. Uh, that being said, this was, uh, these were $200 Canadian, including shipping, which was free. Um, but I think if I brush it the right way, I'll kind of get it in the way I want, looking the way I want. I tried using a scrub brush to work it in a little bit better. Uh, don't really try that because that doesn't work very well. Um, so I'm just going to continue here by hand. Just want to give you that little uh, little update as uh, as I go. All right, so I finished the the one boot. There's just one fairly thin layer of the um, let's show you the cap there of the uh, the leather seal uh, Outback brand. Just go to your saddle shop or online. There's a bunch of beeswax um, sort of leather seal waterproofing uh, agents you can find. Uh, when it goes on, it goes on a little bit, you know, almost like uneven and, and blotchy, but uh, I left it for a little while. Uh, the front I just did, but I left the back for a little while just to see how it would go through and it evened out nicely. Uh, so I expect the front to do the same, uh, as well as I still need to do around the ridges, which I'll do. Uh, but you can sort of see the difference between the boot that I have not yet done. Uh, already a huge uh, color difference uh, in between the two. Uh, just with one small layer. Uh, so realistic it shows you really don't have to go crazy on these. Um, I'm definitely gonna finish up a layer, maybe put a second layer on, and then uh, and then kind of see uh, what the dubbing will do and see if it's even required. Uh, Cause it looks good to me so far, but I'm sure more the better, but I also don't wanna go overkill and just cake on a bunch of stuff onto this, uh, but might, uh, my need to all cross the bridge when I come to it. All right. All right, so I got it all dubbed up. Uh, like I said, uh, the next thing I was gonna attempt to do is um, wax the shoelaces. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna do some more research and see if there's a better way to do it. Uh, obviously when you put these on, if you just sort of look at, they have a lot of fluff on them. You know, they kind of just look too new to be on. Uh, I know that the wax shoelaces, um, number one, I think they'll display a lot better. And that's the way they kind of were for waterproofness and they don't come um, <clears throat> undone as easily. They kind of stick in the shoe a little bit better. Uh, so I'll show you the method that I used, which is literally um, taking wax. In this case, I'm not even gonna bother uh, chipping off a piece of this dude. I'm just using the full thing of uh, beeswax. You can probably use other wax. I saw even uh, like hockey stick wax can, you, uh, can work, uh, but I'm guessing in like any candle even. And literally, I've just been sort of rubbing it on. I've been doing it on a cutting board because it's a lot easier, but this is just to show you. So once I get some down, I'll flip it. I do the other side. And I don't get too heavy on it, but I get it a little bit, just like you're sort of coloring it with a crayon, you know? And then uh, I get my rag that already has the dubbin and uh, beeswax on it and uh, sort of just squeeze and sort of strip it down a little bit and that as you can see gets uh there's, there's always gonna be some flakes in there that you'll have to get out uh but that kind of makes it have that little sheen and i think the main thing is it just gets rid of the fluffiness of uh of a brand new lace so if i can show you even closer there that's sort of how the repros will come all fluffy and after you've done it all it's going to be a little bit more like that yeah you're still gonna have some fluffs this is my first run on these uh, so I think a few more runs. I'm hoping they'll darken up a little bit uh, as well. I think the more you work in the wax, 
the more dark they'll become. Obviously, running your finger along it even does a better job. Um, but obviously, you don't want to get too damn waxy from it. All right. Well, I'm going to keep doing that and let you guys know how it goes. All right. So I've done both boots now on both sides, all the way around. Uh, I sort of did a, a thin layer of this, let it dry overnight, and did another layer uh, the next day and let it dry overnight. Um, you don't really have to let it dry. Uh, I just figured it's kind of easier to judge the boot after after everything soaked in properly uh, on whether I want to put more. I'm pretty happy with it right now. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the dubbin if it's required or not, uh, but I'm going to do a, a test spot of the dubbin and sort of see how that looks. Because uh, right now this is looking pretty good and feeling pretty good. Um, so I don't know how much I want to uh, cake onto it, but uh, I'm gonna give it a quick test and I'll let you know how it goes. All right, so um, just tried the dubbing out. So I sort of did it on the back of the boot here. Um, it's coming through nice and dark, kind of like what you'd expect to see, uh, closer to what I saw on my original. Uh, like this is definitely more of a brown, but this is getting sort of more chocolatey how you want to see. Uh, so I think I'm just going to follow the, the proper specs being, uh, beeswax and dubbing on top and make it nice and dark. That way I'm nice and waterproof, not sort of, uh, halfing it. Uh, so I'm going to continue with this and, uh, see the rest of the boot turns out and, uh, let it dry and then we'll see what we get. All right. All right. So I got the boot that I've dubbed and this is the one that's just, uh, still the beeswax only on it. Uh, so this is nice and dark and kind of, you know, I think that's, that's pretty decent, kind of what you'd expect to see, um, sort of from a more period accurate, um, dubbing job. Uh, so I'm going to do this boot as well, see how it turns out. And I think after I let it dry overnight also, it's going to lighten up a little bit, uh, just in case yours do come out really dark and you're a bit concerned, uh, letting it kind of dry, I think should do a trick. All right. All right, so got them all done, got them all laced up, um, got them sealed. So beeswax, I did two layers. Uh, I did one layer of dubbing. Uh, I'm sure I might put on another before I go out in the field. Um, the laces uh, I've waxed up. Um, again, you could probably go nuts on the waxing or, or go and buy uh, even original uh, wax laces really whatever you want to do. Uh, I couldn't find any specific standard on lacing, uh, as well as even the way you lace it up. I'm used to the lateral lace for the British and Canadian style. Uh, looks at all the pictures I've found, at least uh, referencing originals and the original pair uh, that I had. Uh, usually it goes, the lace goes over top in the front rather than underneath. And then this sort of goes under, over, under, over, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, so overall, uh, Epic Militaria, good, um, good score from them, uh, super comfortable. So I'm going to ride these around a little bit and, uh, and work them in and, uh, see how they go. But, um, that hopefully should, uh, should help you on your journey of, uh, of getting your boots, um, uh, up to par after receiving them in the mail from, uh, whatever reproduction, uh, company that you chose. All right. Again, Bloody Vintage signing out.